Okay. The last thing we need to do on this project is add all of the features onto the outer shell that we need to cut and create. Because we're going to need that if we uh, have the manufacturer cut this stuff for us. So yeah, let's see. If I add, where is, there's the top shell, okay. So I guess I should start by figuring out how to cut all these slots. I'm not sure how exactly to line everything up. But we'll find out. Draw sketch here. Nope, I'm in the wrong menu. Part design. There we go. Active. Uh, okay. <laughs> that didn't quite do the thing I wanted it to do. Can I change the orient? Nope, I can't. Alright, let's close that sketch. It didn't attach it. Did it uh, put it down here. That's weird. I put it underneath this part. Not what I wanted. Okay. Do my X, Y. Okay, I think that would work. Yeah, that definitely didn't work. <laughs> it's just put that on the X, Y, and then it seems to be on the Z, Y plane. It's kind of weird. All right, I'm going to figure this out, <laughs> but it might take me, it might take me a second, so just bear with me. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Map. Okay, so maybe I got to create a sketch and then map it to a face. Okay, there's a sketch on the XY plane. It exists there, and then map a sketch to uh, 25. Okay. Hold on. Let me click the face first. Flat face. Okay. I, did that work? Ah, no. <laughs> what the heck? Uh. I 
I just want to do some slight modifications here. I'll try and figure it out. All right, hold on a second. Send some messages out real quick. Excuse me. So there's got to be a way to... So supposedly click the face and then create new sketch. And then it always messes up the uh, whole alignment. Uh, how hard can this be? Okay, I have to do this from a different workbench. From here, create new sketch. <laughs> I assume that's in reference to the bounties or something. Understandable. Okay, let's see. I thought I made this. Okay, hold on. Please, do I have to double click on that? No, that doesn't work that way. Okay. going to figure out how to do this. If anybody knows how to put a sketch on a, the face of a object in FreeCAD, you'll uh, win the bounty for tonight. I thought this was going to be an easy night, but I guess not. Oh well. Alright, let's try again. A 
eventually I'll figure this out. To create a new part to sign object, there must be an active body in the document. Please make one active or create a new body. Let's see. Uh, hmm. So you got to can't necessarily do this from the sketch or workbench. So working with the part design body, you should create your sketch from a part design workbench. Um, All right, I, I know I can figure this out. Must be an active body. Huh? All right, we're getting closer. I'm figuring out what this error is. Let's see. Wasn't that useful? Okay, hold on. Maybe I can. I don't know. There's nothing inside this. Um... So if I select like this, right? No, okay, that doesn't work either about this part. Nope. Eventually I'm going to figure this out though. I just, hmm. it can't be this hard. And all the others, I could just uh, click a face and then create a sketch and it would work. There must be an active body. All right, hold on. Let's find, actually, let's look at something that I made. This. So if I click like here and then click new sketch, okay, so I still get the same error.
Hmm. Consistently getting the same error on that. Nope. <laughs> Oh, that did it. Okay. Interesting. So I can't make any of these others active? Oh, because it's not a body. What is this then? It's a part, not a body. So that's why I can't do a sketch on it. Okay, I'm, I'm learning. I'm slowly learning here. Eventually, I will figure this out. Okay, so maybe I need to make a sketch and then map it onto that. Let's start with turning all of this off so that I only have the thing I need. be off as well. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Okay, so supposedly, let's try this. Let's create a sketch. I don't know, does not attach it for now. XY plane. Okay, so that's in the correct place, just not there. Then close that and then take this sketch and we need to map it. Okay. Hold on. Object X, Y, okay. Y, Z. So the X, Y on this is, is different. That's why this has not worked in the past. Right, okay. So if that's the X, Y, then I think I need it on the Y, Z. So map a sketch to a face, this one, okay. Oh, we gotta select this object. All right, let's see here. And then YZ, okay. And then if I open this sketch, okay, that gets us closer. <laughs> I need to be able to move it up now to the top. I think it has something to do with the fact that these are downloaded models, which is making this really hard, uh, which is really annoying. And there's not really any good explanation anywhere. If you know of a good explanation, please let me know. What happens if I move this into a... 
This assembly. Can I do that? Nope. <laughs> Okay, I can move it there. <laughs> oh, it changed again. Well, that's really annoying. Maybe I can map it again. Hold on. Map the sketch. I'm having a really good time right now. <laughs> well, that didn't do anything either. All right. Um, needs to be XZ then. Okay. So now that it's moved in this part, it's taken a different orientation. just need to get it once right and then I can probably figure it out from there all right there we go now how do I adjust the sketch Maybe now that it's in this, I can... All right, let's close this. If I just select that now... Okay. Oh, we got there. <laughs> All right. Look at that. Finally got it on the right spot. Gosh, that was hard. All right, let me turn on the PCB. So we need to cut slots around these. Which I gotta somehow figure out how to do. But that's okay, okay, so. This sketch is in the right place now. Um, I guess we just start with the center one. We could probably figure out mostly the size of that from the, uh, from the part stuff. Let's see here. This is the assembly. Yeah, I don't need the assembly. I need the, the PCBA stuff. Here it is. All right, our potentiometers. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. We know that these are 60 millimeter uh, sliders. I don't know. Oh man, there's gonna be a whole lot to this. <laughs> there's always the question in my mind of like, how much effort do I put in this, or do I just uh, uh, just draw some shape around it and call it good? I feel like that's a terrible idea, but you know. Maybe I could go off the location of this stuff. No. 
placed according to position zero, so that's not going to help me. Actually, where's the origin of the set? Bottom corner. Okay. Interesting. Okay, that's interesting. Where's the origin of this at? Aha! Right in the center of where it needs to be. Okay, now we're getting closer. Let's turn that one off. I could see where the origin is at. I wish I could see that in relation to the rest of the model. That would be the most useful thing. I don't think that's how that's spelled. Is that actually right? Or are you just trying to make me laugh? That's a city in Germany, actually. Fun fact. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hmm. I can't quite get this to work. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to line this up right so that I can... Uh... Hey, no apologies for poor attempts, all right? Accuracy by volume. If you throw enough bad jokes at the wall, one of them's going to stick. But that only works if you can just keep throwing them out there. Uh, let's see. Maybe I just place one of them and then position the rest based off of that. I have my uh, model here, my location data stuff. But there's so many offsets and things, I don't know where any of it actually ends up at. I could probably tell how far apart everything is. So here's what the actual PCB looks like when assembled. And then let's go to the 2D view. Okay. Oh, there we go. Current properties. But everything here is done by that bottom coordinate, so this isn't going to help me much. Other than it could tell me how far apart they are. That's the one thing it could do. It could tell me how far apart they are. Which might be enough. Okay, I think I just have to really just draw a shape. Is there any way I can project? So free CAD, project, geometry to sketch. Oh, you can provide, okay, this might work actually. So you can provide a, a, a constraint to some sort of external geometry. I don't know how easy, or how well this works though, or like what the constraints are on it. So let me, all right, start by turning off this. And we'll just try it here. Let me close this sketch so I can reorient this. Okay. Let's open it back up. And then we need a rectangle. 
from like there to down here somewhere. Okay. And then somehow I have to constrain it to some sort of external geometry. You know what, I might need to turn this one off. Ah, so it doesn't look like it'll let me constrain to any of anything that's outside of that part. Okay. What if I move it? To the circuit board. Can I do that? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Interesting. Also, that just messed everything up. Like, look at this. What the heck is this? Alright, so that's not going to work. Hmm. Okay, how would you do this then? Um, we well, you know the center one is in the center. So if we could constrain it directly center here, and then we could do based on a size from that. I think that could work, actually. Okay, hold on. So I'm going to turn this off. And then we need to open this sketch back up. Okay. And then do a constraint from here to... How does this work? <laughs> I don't think I've added any constraints yet. Oh, this is really hard to see. Okay. I tell you what, let's do the first things first. Let's just constrain this. Uh, if I go to our thing here, it's 60 millimeters plus the thickness of the, uh, the post. And we have the metal lever. I think. It's so hard to tell. This drawing is not super accurate. So 6.6. .6. Well, no, 5 millimeters, but we should add an extra just to be safe. So 6 millimeters. So let me change my units. That's exactly... Oh, man. This is going to be so many steps just to do a basic cut, and it's going to be great. All right, we're back to millimeters. Whoops. Okay. And then this needs to be 60 plus uh, 6, so 66, yep. Yeah. All right, and then... Hold on. Whoops. Don't want that done yet. Let's move that out of the way. And then we need this line. And then that's the thickness of the post. Which goes up to 1.8, but we need a little extra. So probably 2.8. To give it some room. Okay. Now I need to figure out how to constrain this to other pieces. 
<coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Uh, this doesn't make sense. Also, it looks like I've added a ton of constraints over here, and I haven't intended to do all of that, so... My bad. Alright, if I turn the circuit board back on... We can see where this is at. How we're close, but we're not quite there. I think I can put it in the center. Sir so dies a lot. How's it going? How's your Thursday? I'm doing all right. I'm just struggling through trying to figure out how to do this. I guess we could constrain it to the center. So we can constrain between... Alright, that point and this line should be half of the 2.8, so 1.4. Because we know that's going to be in the center. Okay. And then we got to figure out how to constrain the height accurately. And I don't know how to do that. Other than just, like, guessing at the measurement, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, just line it up as best we can. I, that's the best I can come up with at the moment. There's got to be a lot better way to do this, but I think for the moment this is going to be my option. All right, so a little space there, a little bit more space there. We could probably move that down some. Right there, maybe. And that leaves a little space on that side. Yep. Okay. All right, we'll turn this back off, and then we'll add a constraint there. Come on. Select a point. Fine. There we go. All right, from that point to this line, it's going to be whatever it is now. That looks good. All right, so, and now our shape has turned green because everything's locked into place. Okay, so now we're done with that. Supposedly. We have this sketch right here. Now I need to somehow make a cut with it. They're moving along. We're this is really dang close. We're trying to make a like a a MIDI controller with some faders and buttons, and I've done everything. Uh, like here's the circuit board that I've designed. I'll turn that into the 3D view. There we go. So you can see that uh, with the sliders on it, and then in here I've actually I'll turn on some of these other things. So I have the circuit board in here. I'll turn this off. Uh, here we go. There's the. There we go. There's the bottom. The screws. So I, most of it's here. I've got buttons as well. Oops. So it should look pretty good when it's done. And it's coming together. 
but I'm trying to figure out this last little bit. So the last thing I have to do is uh, show where the holes need to be cut on the case. So the case, when you buy it, comes as just a, a solid plastic case uh, with no holes or anything, cutting it for buttons and switches and things like that. And so I need to go through and put all those positions in on this uh, top piece right here. So you can see the fader, the sliders are sticking through this thing. I need to put the holes there so that I know where to cut. And then hopefully when I order this from the manufacturer, I can just tell, send them this file with all the cuts and they can just cut it for me and I don't have to figure it out myself. Otherwise I gotta do it with myself with like a Dremel or something, which isn't bad, but I don't wanna, it's more accurate if I have them do it for me. Okay. Man, it is so hard to see this sketch. Where'd it go? There it is. Thanks. I've been working on this for like a month now. It's not the circuit. We actually have a test here too. I put together this little circuit wired together so you can see the the sliders we're going to use. Like here's an example of one. Make sure I'm in focus here. So you can see the slider that'll be sitting down in there. And then I have the buttons as well. You know, you can push them. And uh, I've written most of the software already, so this thing actually works. I can plug it into a, some music software and raise volume and press the button to uh, have it start playing a recording or something. So it proved everything works. It just got to trying to make it actually look good, you know, in its own custom box and everything. Um, I don't need to map it to a face. Oh, this isn't going to work, I don't think. Use the transfer. If you have a legacy document with part design objects without body, use the transfer function in part design to put them into a body. Interesting. Where's the transfer function and part design? <coughs> hmm. Create new datum plane. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, how hard can this be? Move object to another body. Okay, it won't because it has some dependencies. Interesting. Um, man, I just do not know. All right, let's try this again. So what happens if I click this? In order to use part design, you need an active body object in the document. Please make one active, double clicking, or create one. Oh, that's grayed out because I've opened that, okay. If you have a legacy document with part design objects without body, use the transfer function. So these are parts and I need to, or yeah, they're parts, and I need to make them... Hold on. Create a new body. 
I need to make it a body somehow. Clearly, I don't understand very well how this works. Hmm. How's it going, Beth? Ah, oh, man. It's really frustrating. I wouldn't think this would be this difficult to just make a sketch on here and cut a piece out, but I guess it is. This is going to be really embarrassing if I don't get anything done this stream because I'm stuck on this problem the whole time. Can I clone something maybe? And uh, There was an option here in one of these for like cloning a part. If I select this and then create a new clone. Oh, okay. But that doesn't change anything. It doesn't have any new info on it, so that's not useful to me. Okay. Oh, you got a three-day weekend? That's cool. I forget. Tomorrow is Oaks Day, isn't it? For the uh, Kentucky Derby Festival. All right, so how can I do that then? Seriously, if anybody knows how to uh, take like a primitive part or something that I've imported I draw a sketch on it and then cut a hole in that part you will win the uh, Dogecoin bounty I just realized I'm not even showing my work screen here I'm so sorry about that guys this middle bounty here if you know how to do this in FreeCAD you will definitely win that because I am stuck right now I guess I need to change the current goal. <laughs> what we're what it's listed as right now is definitely not what we're doing. Okay. That's probably a little better. Hopefully that helps us make a little more sense. Um, let's see. I keep like getting stuck back at square one. Like I've got this sketch in this assembly. It seems like I should be able to do something with it. <laughs> Excuse me. But no matter what I do... Alright, so what are these? Create a new body and make it active. Create a new part and make it active. Okay, well then what's the square thing. I thought that was a part as well.
Oh no. So, okay, so I'm I'm looking at reading an article on this and evidently there's no easy way to do this so far. Well, hold on. Maybe there's a way. Well, I appreciate you all sticking with me, even though this problem has been annoyingly difficult. Imports to make a body from it. Part is optional here. Okay. If I move this outside of this part, could I possibly make it into its own body? Supposedly? I don't know if that's how that works. I can add it to that part. Oh, I probably need to make a new part then if I need to if I want to do that, but I don't know that this is gonna help me any. Alright, let's try it. Why not? What's the worst that could happen, right? Oh, maybe, maybe. We're getting closer. That might have done it, actually. Okay. I might have to do this with both the top and bottom shells. But... And the sketch moved here, because I think it was dependent on that. All right. So that being said, I can probably move this one back and then just use this body. Right? Okay, yeah. All right, so let's rename this. Modified enclosure. And then this part is the is this one, the SL sixty eight C. So we need to rename that. Dash R. And then we'll say modified. Okay. Now we need to move this. Because you can see here it's turned the wrong direction, so. So let's take this piece here and then rotate it. We need it to be on the X axis, so let's make sure that's correct. Nope, it's on the Z. So let's put it on the X. And then for the angle, 90 maybe? Nope, 270. There we go. Okay, 
So now it's on the 270 angle. Which makes that lined up again. And then theoretically now I can go here and make a sketch. Yes! Okay. We're getting we're getting closer. We're getting just a little bit closer. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Okay. I'm going to delete this sketch. I don't want it anymore. I can't delete, probably because this one's open. Let's close that. Delete this one. I'm just going to start over on it. And then open this sketch back up. Okay, cool. And then I need to see the circuit board as well. So turn that back on so we'll see the switches come through. And then let's start here. Drawing that. Okay. So you're absolutely right, Dejitaki. This has been an hour of struggle to reach this point where I can draw some lines. But I will take the small victories at this point. Okay. Um, I need to constrain it. What did we say our last ones were? select points we said this one was 2.8 millimeters right yep so that needs to be 2.8 and then we said that this line needed to be 66 so that gives us just a little bit of room outside of it where this will work all right and then i somehow need to constrain this right around this feature here Maybe I can do this external constraint thing now. From here to that. No? Okay, fine. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Come back. All right. Select that. Create an edge linked to an external geometry. Hmm. It's not. Okay, how do I do this? Um. I think I looked this up earlier. Oops. Turns out I got my caps lock on. Precad. Um, constrain external geometry. Let's just look this up. All right, so I'm looking at the wiki here. Use the external geometry tool when you need to apply a constant between sketch geometry and something outside of the sketch. It works by inserting a linked construction geometry to the sketch. It's magenta. Using this tool to link to generate its all geometry can lead to unexpected results. Okay, I didn't comprehend like hardly any of what I just read. Something outside of the sketch, it works by inserting. Between the sketch geometry and something outside of the sketch, it works by inserting a linked construction geometry into the sketch. Select an edge or a vertex that you want to link to in the sketch. Escape to select another tool to stop importing geometry. Oh, wait, okay. So, should be in part design, right? No. Let's try this again. We're getting close. 
and then the feature I want to link to is there, and it's already this there. It's purple. Okay. So then, if I turn this model off, oh, probably all of them actually. Oh well, probably wasn't really what you wanted because I just turned off all of that. There it is. Okay, that's what I want. These purple lines. Excellent. Okay, so now I need to figure out... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how far away it needs to be. And I need it to be in the middle. It's 2.8 millimeters. And how far apart are these? I guess what I need for that is the drawing of the part. So I should have that downloaded. Is it this one? All right, hang on. Opening another drawing here. Oh, why would it do that? Every t I need to fix that. It's it keeps the reason it takes forever to open these drawings is because it keeps opening them in Microsoft Edge, which as we know is terrible. I need to fix that default. All right, here's our drawing here. Distance between these edges is 3.034 inches. So I need to convert that to millimeters, divide by two or subtract this and then divide by two. All right, so 3.034, that's 77.0636 millimeters. So if I take that, so what is that? 77.0636 minus 2.8, divide that by two. 37.1318, so that's how far from this edge it needs to be. So I do, which constraint? This one. From here, oops, that's not what I wanted. Constraint between two lines. Okay, how do I do this one? That one, that one. Okay, well it's made them parallel, but I need a constraint between the two. Which is not what I'm getting so far, because anytime I click this line, it just does that. Oh, I'm so close. I'm worried I'm going to make too many constraints if I keep this up. Selected item. Fix a length of a line or the distance between a line and a vertex. Uh, how do I fix the distance between two lines? I've made them parallel, so they're they're definitely going to always be parallel. Though, so that's one thing. Create an equality constraint between two lines. I don't think that's what I want, but I want to see what that does. Sure. It did something. I can't tell what it did. I'm going to remove that. Well, 
Oh, you know what? I guess I could do it between the vertex here on the end. Let's do that. So do this one. Arr. So do this line and this vert. Oh. <laughs> Let's try that again. We're almost there, I promise. This vertex and this line. Yay, there we go. Okay, this should be 37.1318. is invalid. Why is that invalid? Ah. Keep hoping for the easy way and you just get... Just get nothing. You want me to build an RC car for my next project idea? That's not a bad one, but I feel like... like, like I, The thing is, like, so many people have made RC cars. I mean, so many companies make it, right? You can pay any amount of money and buy one for any price. And it actually is fairly complicated. So, I'll think about that one. But... I'm trying to find something that's, like, more, like, very specialty, hasn't been made, or uh, is, like, super expensive, and can we try and make a cheap one, you know? Whoops. Let's try that again. That line. Let's try that in X11. What kind of project have you been working on, Sir Dies a Lot? Why is that invalid? That doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. Well, I was trying to avoid doing it this way, but I can constrain to the origin here. I was just hoping to avoid that. Because I wanted to learn how to use these other types of constraints. All right, 1.4 to put it in the middle. Oh, okay. Constraint with index 11 is invalid. Oh, okay, so it's an existing constraint that's causing it. So if we delete this one? Right, that parallel constraint? Trying to make a smartphone that can achieve full desktop functionality when on the go or plugged into a dock. Interesting. So. Yeah, it's that's a tricky one. I guarantee you a lot of people are going after that. That's it's an interesting problem though because and it has potential because we're so much more stuff is moving to smartphone and smartphones are becoming so powerful that at some point they really might just be all the computing power we need. So there's no point in having a big desktop computer like mine if the smartphone could do everything. It's a fun project for us. That's I mean yeah, that sounds awesome. I think it's I think it's really cool and I think even if you don't quite get there the stuff you learn along the way and some of the things you develop would be really awesome pieces of technology. Does your group have a name or a company or somebody that we can look up? Lots of microcontroller related stuff. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'm not allowed to tell you where I work, but my daytime job is an embedded design engineer, so I'm very familiar with working with micros and designing my own circuits and such. A lot of digital stuff. Ah, okay. You're just doing it as a group of friends. Alright, so I should be able to add this constraint now. Supposedly. Right? From this point to here. 37.1318. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, that works. My whole motivation for doing this channel is uh, I'm trying to come up with a new development methodology 
that's based around crowdsourcing. And so I, as per the uh, bounties uh, that I give up, I'm trying to create small tasks that other people can do that I can pay them for. Uh, you know, obviously the, the payout, the few doge coins is, is, not, is not very much, but I don't have any money to work with right now, so I'm doing what I can. Uh, but ideally, in the future, people could donate money towards like a pool for like completing a project like this MIDI controller. And then somebody, whoever the project manager is, can separate that out and say, okay, I'm going to pay this much for this task to be done, this much for this one. And then anybody on the internet, you know, regardless of their education or age or any of their, you know, socioeconomic factors uh, can go, hey, I know how to do that and get and perform that one task and get the reward for it. Kind of the same way that Wikipedia is created, right? Because Wikipedia is edited by people who know a lot about a very specific thing. It's not edited by experts, but by average people who can just tell you like, oh, I don't know much, but I know exactly, you know, how tall this building is. So I can add that detail, you know, that kind of thing. I've worked a lot with ARM processors. Why is that a limitation? Oh, thermals. Does it produce a lot of heat? Some arms controllers are uh, very high powered and produce a lot of heat. Oh, duh. That's straight. Yeah. So if you're trying to run desktop stuff on it. <coughs> yeah, you almost need to like write your own bio slash like virtual machine kind of thing. Oh, man. That's a complicated problem. That's a really complicated problem, but it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, because they use very specific stuff in those. Interesting. I'd be interested to see if the... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just... Allergies getting to be... Um, if you ever develop anything really cool with that, even if you're not done, but just come up with some cool stuff on that, I'd like to see it. Just send me a link over a whisper or something. Okay. Um, I need to constrain this vertically now. It looks like I might be able to use other pieces of geometry maybe, though. So let's see if I can do that. If I turn this on, can I select an edge here? Nope. It still won't let me select anything from the, this PCB. So I'm going to kind of have to wing it again. All right. Which is my least favorite thing to do. How can I do this? Oh, you know what? Here, let me close this sketch for now. I can measure this distance. That's what I can do. Between this point down here and then over here. It's not going to be an exact measurement, but it's going to be pretty close. Yeah, so from like right there down to like right here. 12.08. That's pretty straight, so that's probably close. And then we know that it's 65 millimeters, so minus half a millimeter. So if I do like 11.58. To this bottom edge, it should be pretty close. Hex core CPU that runs at 2 gigahertz and a GPU that runs at 138 gigahertz. 1338 gigahertz, 1338 megahertz, and uh, 384 CUDA cores, NVIDIA architecture, 48 sensor cores, along with 8 gigs DDR4 RAM. Yeah, tensor core. I figured you meant tensor, yep. Um, wow, one chip has all that? Oh, no, yeah, the, the chip is the CPU and then a GPU. Oh, it's the size of a credit. So it's a single chip, everything in there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What's the name of that? And who makes it? 
Because that's incredible. I want one. Do they have dev kits? NVIDIA just an Xavier NX. Okay. I'm going to look that up. Okay, so we need this to be 11.58 millimeters to the edge. So we need to open this sketch again. Oh, I'm sure it's expensive. That doesn't change. I want one, but I probably can't afford it. Most dev, a lot of dev kits are. Okay. Interesting. All right, there we go. Now I can turn this off and constrain to that. Nope. That's what I want. That line. Yeah. There we go. 11.58. Supposedly the right number. The nano dev kit is only $53. Interesting. You may have just caused me to make another purchase. If I turn the, let's see, I turn the PCB on. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Don't know the price is going to go down much with chip shortage stuff right now, but... That's a really cool piece of hardware if it's got all that. Okay, so sketch is done. Supposedly. And you can see it's turned green, so that means everything's locked into place. TX200 was 200 bucks. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, I'm sure if I look up one of those, I'll find them all. Alright, so I'm done with this. Okay, there we go. Look, we're making a pocket now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really screwed me over on my day job a lot. I just const I've had so many emergency projects that have to get moved around. It's probably not like the most popular thing right now though, but like basic arm core micros are super insanely hard to get. All right, I think I can just, yeah, extrude to that. Okay, cool. So we made the first slot. It only took me an hour and 20 minutes to figure out how to do that. All right, so... Can I... open the sketch back up and do some more to it? I should be able to make a couple more of these and then constrain them to this uh, center sketch. I need to figure out the distance between these parts. So X location is 905.59. Oops. And eighteen forty-five. This is in mills. Minus nine oh five. Microsoft and Apple making ARM based products. I'm sure the software to run stuff will come soon enough. That's true. It could. It has potential. Nine thirty nine point four one. 
so that's in mils. So okay, so that that many mils between. Man, I hate working in different mixing units. Nine three nine four one. It's twenty three point eight six one zero one four millimeters. That's a number. All right. So supposedly that's the difference distance between these. Hmm. What projects have you worked on in the past? Um, I got to be careful how I answer this. I'm required by my employer to be confidential about even where I work and what kind of work I do, so there's a limit to what stuff I can say. Um... But the best, I mean, the best really just embedded stuff, like low-level bare metal things. I'm really good with um, uh, bare metal, you know, C code in embedded devices, uh, assembly. I work a lot in assembly, surprisingly enough, so. Oh, like personal projects. The last project I did, I built that giant LEGO Millennium Falcon on this channel, and then I ran uh, NeoPixels through it, the addressable LEDs, and then I wrote a whole thing on a Teensy to... Uh, uh, like a library to control all that, and then a uh, communication protocol and wrote some stacks to uh, uh, so I could control it with my computer through Python. So I could write a Python script on my computer and control it through the serial port and light up different LEDs and things. So that was neat. And then um, what other stuff have I worked on? Not a lot. I spend most of my time working on actual work stuff. I've just various Arduino projects and things. I tend to gravitate a lot towards like communication interfaces between devices. Hopefully that answers your question. Part of the reason I'm doing this channel is because I, I feel like I haven't worked on enough stuff and I haven't learned enough things. As obviously like here, I'm trying to teach myself CAD. I'm just trying to learn a lot of new stuff and uh, this gives me a reason to do it. Let's see. How do I constrain the distance between these two? Well, I should probably constrain the size of them first. A NeoPixel lightsaber. I would. That would be kind of fun, actually. I feel like it'd be pretty straightforward. But I say that about all my projects before I you know, start doing them. Seventy millimeters by forty-five millimeters. Jeez, that's intense. The biggest chip I've ever worked with was a ten by ten. So that's incredible. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. Like when you were talking about thermal issues, I'm sure that is a massive problem with that. Chip like that would produce so much heat. Wow, that's intense. Gonna have to use lots of thermal paste. <coughs> Ever hear the story of uh, Steve Jobs when they were making the first iPhone and they told him they couldn't make it any smaller? And uh, he threw their prototype in the fish tank in the conference room or their their executive room and said, look, there's air coming out of it, you know, in bubbles. That means there's space in there so you can make it smaller. I'm sure that would have been a thermal nightmare for them. Like, OK, we got to literally take all the air out of this thing and somehow we still have to cool it. I guess I could just constrain distance between these two points if I can get them level. Yeah, if I just constrain to this bottom edge, that's probably the best option. Is that 11.58?
Yeah, a fan would definitely be too big for a phone. Plus, all phones now are, like, a lot of phones now are waterproof. Basically negates that. You're probably not going for that level of uh, engineering. Or you might be, I don't know. But, yeah, most people wouldn't expect a, a you know, big vent on, the fan, on a phone. That chip, though, shows you, like, how amazing, like, single-board computers are getting these days. All right, and this is the one we want, 23.861. That makes sense. That's about what you're going to have to do to cool it down that much. I feel this, uh, I'm sure this is actually even. It doesn't look even, but everything's green, so it's all should be lined up correctly. All right, if I turn on the PCB, we should see it is wrong. Good. <laughs> Dang it. All right, so my measurements were off there. Eighteen forty five minus nine oh five point five nine. So it dies a lot. Thank you for the follow. X operating type of seventy C. Yeah, that's pretty common for most chips of that type. So how did I mess that up? Did I click on the wrong thing? Eighteen forty five. R2, R1 is 905.59 on the X. Yeah. Oh, that's not a bad idea, especially if you could have, like, yeah, some sort of fan in the dock, like, brewing right into a vent, cool that down. And then you could run it in some sort of, like, you know, low-power mode normally, and then when you put it in the dock, like, really open it up and push it. Why does this not make sense? Switch is a pretty big inspiration for it. Oh, that makes sense, actually, because the Switch is pretty small for all the power it has. Cool stuff. Oh, I constrained to the wrong thing. That's what I did wrong. I constrained between the two closest lines, but the way I'm measuring is from the equivalent lines on each shape. So, okay. I know what I did wrong. I need to delete these last two constraints. And then we need to select this point and this point. Three point eight six one. Okay. And then this point. And this point. Okay, now everything turns green again. And I turn the PCB. And there, everything's lined up. Okay. That looks good. <coughs> Woo. So which is running off what is essentially a last-gen version of what we are now using. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, yeah. I, the Switch has a vent, too. It's, it gets surprisingly warm. 
I'm curious to see what y'all can pull off with that. That level of work does take a small team, so it makes sense you're doing it with a group. One of the biggest problems, I this is kind of random off subject, but one of the biggest problems I face with this channel is that I know a lot about a very specific thing like embedded systems, right? And I'm trying to do all this other stuff so I can learn it, but the point of this whole crowdsourced engineering thing is I don't necessarily have to know everything because there could be somebody out there that knows better or is an expert in this, uh, but I'm kind of helpless to reach those people. I thought offering the bounties would help some, at least for the memes, if nothing else. But I need to get some more traffic and people that are like of different types of engineers to kind of help. There's a reason there's more mechanical people than software people. on That makes sense, yeah, because the software stuff is more or less, I don't want to say it's straightforward, it's not, but your challenge, you have a lot more mechanical design challenges there than you do software design challenges. Okay, so I guess now I need to add the holes for the buttons. Let me make sure this, uh, if I close the sketch, does it do the cuts? Oh, it does, look at that. That'd be cool. Yeah, file for a patent on it. The only downside of that is it's expensive and hard to get a patent, but if you have something working there, you might be able to find an investor for it, unless you all have the money. Okay. I can't constrain to the buttons themselves, but if I can figure out where the buttons are in relation to this enclosure, then I think I can constrain to that. Sir dies a lot. I'm glad you stopped by. Feel free to jump or stop in any time. I enjoy talking about this stuff. Yeah, the idea to non-technical audiences is pretty difficult. Yes, it is. That is, it's very hard to do. That is the hallmark of an amazing engineer, though, is one that can communicate a really complex idea into simple terms. Like if you can explain something to a five-year-old then you really understand what you're talking about. That kind of stuff, you know? If you can explain something simply, if you or if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough, that kind of stuff. Uh, hey, yeah, you're right. There's a little, very little to reference to it. So, yeah, it's that's a hard thing to do. It's a skill that most engineers don't have. Uh, and it, that doesn't mean that they're not, you know, great engineers, but, like, uh, the, the best engineers can sell their ideas to somebody who is not technical. You're right, it's a good exercise. If nothing else, you're going to learn a lot, which is really cool. Okay, buttons are where? Mechatronics. I assume that's a combination of mechanical and electronics. I've not heard that term before. Maybe I can look up from the positions of these. A little mechanical and a bit of software. You know, honestly, that's what I'm trying to become here. I just don't know enough mechanical stuff. As obvious, I'm using FreeCAD. If this channel ever makes enough money, I'm going to switch to Fusion 360 or something. Or SolidWorks. Have some better tools. Alright. Hmm. Oh, you're still working on it. That's cool. I graduated a few years ago. I got a bachelor's and master's in uh, essentially com computer engineering, but basically a glorified computer, a computer science with a bit more of an engineering background. What specific degree are you working on?
dual major in computer engineering and electronics. Yep. All right. So covering all your bases there. That's awesome. That's a lot of work doing both of those. All right. What's the best way to get the buttons on here? Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. So if it only has one semester, then that's you definitely an awesome decision. Definitely made the right call with that one. Let's see here. 30 millimeters. 33.02. Plus, there are only four computer science classes required for computer engineering where I go, but also eight computer or triple E classes. Ah, okay. I'm trying to remember. To get my master's, I had to take an insane number of computer science courses. I don't even remember how many. I transferred schools in the middle of it too, so I ended up with a bunch of extra stuff. I ended up graduating with something close to like 190 credit hours. And a bunch of which was wasted, unfortunately. But <coughs> oh, Okay. If I show the origin of these buttons, it should be in the very middle, I believe. I think if I... Yeah, it is in the middle. Okay, so if I go off the XY positioning... Oh, four credits per class. Okay, most of mine were three. Interesting stuff. Um, so where to do this then? Uh, I should probably just write down this uh, or take a screenshot of it of the current positioning and see if I can create a point or a circle with that as the uh, position. So let's see if I go this button here. I need this positioning. Let me take a screenshot of this. Okay. Then turn these buttons off or turn the play button off at least and open the sketch back up. And then we need to draw a circle. Let me just turn a lot of this off. Okay. And then I need the size of that as well. How big are the buttons? I forgot. Let me pull up that data sheet. All right, here it is. Data sheet for the buttons. Oh, it's an M12, so 12 millimeters. That's right. So I probably need to go like 13 to be safe. Plastics need a lot of room. It's been really cool talking to you. Oh, yeah, no problem, dude. Anytime. I, I just enjoy learning about this stuff. So it's always good to talk to somebody who has experience, especially in my in the areas that I know about, but has experiences that I don't have or has worked with technologies that I haven't, because then I can learn something. Okay. 
let's constrain this to 13. Oh, but it's a radius. So what's half of 13? 6.5. There we go. Main focus is electric vehicles. That's cool. It's a big up and coming industry. Can I constrain a point in space? Coincident constraint on the selected item. Vertex is from the sketch. That's not what I want. I guess I could constrain it from the edge. Since we know what this distance is. That's true. I guess I always thought electric cars would be easier. But I guess you're right. The the safety requirements would be a lot tr would be a little trickier for a lot of things. All the batteries and then you don't have the engine or the traditional like crumple space zones and everything. Still though. Oh yeah, greater number of micros as well. Yep. I'm sure that the elec the electronic complexity I bet goes through the roof. Okay, I need to figure out how to do this exactly. What number did we work with here? I should pull up. Don't need that one. Don't need that. Um, where is that sketch or that drawing? There it is. This one is the one I need. Hold on. Try not to have too many windows open. Okay. So the distance there is 3.034 inches to millimeters is what? Seventy-seven point zero six three six. Seven point zero six three six. There we go. Okay, so that's the number of millimeters there. So now, if I go back to this, and I need to go from somehow translate the pos this x position into a side to side position here. because I know that the origin is in the middle. So divide this by two, and then subtract this value, 30.353. No. Yes, yeah. Subtract 30.353 equals 8.1788. So that's the constraint between this center point and this line. So let me get this out of the way. Oops. Oh, come on. Sometimes FreeCAD will just like let me not select anything and just click the constraint and then... All right, 8.1788. All right, whoops, move that up. Okay, and then we need a height above this bottom line here. And we could probably do that the same way. Um. So what would that height be? 
what's the distance here in this 5.034 you need that in millimeters again 127.8636 okay excellent so it's from the center point so half of that plus the y value in that screenshot i took So divided by 2 gives 63.9, plus the y value is 33.02. And that's the height that this needs to be at. So 96.9518 between here and here. Nope, not what I wanted. Oh no, I closed the sketch. <laughs> Let's try that again. Delete this one. Hold on, everything went wrong. What just happened? No, it lost everything. All that stuff I just did. Ah. I think FreeCAD crashed. Oh no, and I haven't saved in a while. Rookie mistake, man. Okay, it's saved. All right, so maybe that saved some of my stuff. Jeez. Okay, Control Y saved us. Can I save it now? And not have anything crash? Okay, good. We're getting there. And then this constraint. It's all right, Terrence. We, I think we recovered. I think uh, control Z, control Y saved us here. All right, that one's gone. All right, we're good. And I'm just going to save this whole thing real quick. <laughs> Always save your draw. Okay. So now I should be able to close this, right? Unhandled exception. Please wait until the auto, refi auto recovery file has been saved. Okay, hold on. Uh-oh, we might actually have an issue. I'm getting exceptions down here in the corner. Try saving that. Still saving, still saving. Okay. Can I close it? Notify unknown document. Oh, no, it's blue now. Okay, let me turn this off. I think, I think, can I do this? This has worked out. Okay, I, I've lost the circle, but everything else stayed. So I'm going to try and put these circles in and then probably be done for tonight. Hmm, something's not working. Come on. Oh no. Something's broken. It's glitched out on me somehow, and I don't know how.
Oh, no. Okay. This is not good. I guess I'm going to have to just basically do this part again. Uh, that's all right. I have, I can at least save these measurements, I think. No, well, yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot tonight that I'll be able to do this a lot faster next time. But it's really annoying to have to take another day to do this, which should have been done. I don't know what happened. It's just like... Everything just stopped working. I know. I, I got it. I just got to... I am a strong believer in open source hardware, but sometimes or software, but sometimes it really tries to get to you. It tries to make you stop believing in it. Yeah, I can't do anything now. Um, okay. I'm going to try again next time. So next time my stream will be on Tuesday. And then we will actually finish this. Um, I learned a lot, but unfortunately because of a corrupted file, it, thinks I'm, it looks like I'm going to lose everything that I did tonight. So that sucks. But we'll get there. All right, well... Oops, sorry. I guess if you want more updates, yeah, I know, right? It's just sometimes this stuff happens. It's part of engineering. Sometimes you just like, you work for a whole day or two or even longer and just find out it was all wasted. But it wasn't wasted. I learned how to do this. I learned how to uh, make the modifications that I needed. So it's not actually a waste. It just, I got to redo some of the work. Uh, you know, the usual. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram if you want more updates. Twitter especially is where I post stream updates. And yeah, no bounties paid out tonight. Or the yeah. Although one of those, the project to do after this one might be paid out if I pick that. So we'll see. But I appreciate you all uh, joining me tonight. And uh, you all have a good night. And I will see you all Tuesday.